And here we go. We're going to call this uh, take two <laughs> of the first episode of the Goofy Guy, which is, you know. So, um, I figure I've been wanting to put something out there, and this may as well be it. I want to just throw out there, just, I'll make a separate video perhaps, probably, is that I'm predisposed to love movies like this. I am a gigantic Marvel fan and have been for as long as I can remember. Spider-Man and Batman are two literally my favorite characters. One and two, it's Spider-Man and Batman. And and I'm more of a Spider-Man, which... And, and the fact that those are the two probably most prominent gigantic superheroes on the planet, short of, you know... I mean, Superman has got his controversies, so I would say Batman literally is the center. I mean, they know that. And anyways, I digress, which I will. So we'll try to keep this under control, hence the list, because there will be a spoiler version of any of these thoughts, because I got a lot of them, which is why the movie ultimately, I would say, is going to get a fantastic rating from me, which I haven't officially, um, you know, written down. So, um... We'll start with likes, we'll move on to, you know, the middle of dislikes. I might interchange some of this, kind of cut it as we go. Um, try to keep it short. So, um, likes. The relationships uh, amongst the characters and the acting itself, as directed by Chloe Zhao, was just fantastic. I have to say... Um, <sighs> It's amazing what you can do when uh, you're given concepts and not necessarily being able to land on every aspect, but most of them. None of this fell apart at all. You know, this is where I needed to cheat. So we have Gemma Chan as Cersei. Uh, she has the power to... Uh, turn inanimate objects into other inanimate objects at her will, seemingly. And that's what I have gathered, so we'll call that a spoiler, if you would. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. I actually don't know anything about the Eternals deep cut. I'm with, uh, as as a uh, friend, uh, uh, you know, friend, uh, uh, movie fun friend, so to speak. The, the family of this, you know, YouTube community of all this. Anyways, um... Jeremy John's point is that, like, um, you know, uh, where's the light? Anyways, digress. Sorry, lost the train of thought sometimes. A little bit too. So, uh, Richard Men as Icarus, Angelina Jolie as Athena, uh, Selma Hayek as Ajax, Kit Harrington as Dane Whitman, Canal Mudgy. Canel Mangiani, and I'm sorry if I'll screw this up, as Kingo, Leah McHugh as Sprite. The first time I heard her name, I genuinely thought it was the pop. I didn't realize that it was. Anyways, um, uh, Brian Tyree Henry as Fastos, uh, Lauren Riddleoff as Makari. Uh, let's go with Brian Tyree, first of all. The character Fastos is gay and in a relationship with a young son. Um, which goes straight into, unfortunately, the middling, the PG-13 stuff that they had to deal with. Like, I like the fact that they get to put this stuff on a pedestal, but they have to definitely, like, lean into the PG-13 of that situation. But um, that same problem is also set up twice in the movie. There's some romance, um, which is why it wasn't released in China, from one of the reasons I understand. Plus, the whole thing is spiritual, and I thought China had a big problem with that, too. Doesn't matter. Um, uh, and anyways, uh, super cool storyline. I'm not taking anything away from that. I am so sorry. I did not actually, I'm not trying to characterize the situation any which way. I think it was a very bold choice and very unique. But I do find the fact that they have to contain it in Marvel Universe and PG-13 limiting. So, you know, middle. It's, but, uh, you know, good luck trying to, to convey, like, these thoughts and ideas uh, to the entire world at a PG-13 level. So, it doesn't matter. Uh, it does. Sorry. It does matter. It's a, it's a digression waiting to happen. Um, Lauren Riddleoff 
Uh, I props. Oh my gosh, not just props, but she's already apparently she is of course an actually deaf actor. Any time that you can ever promote ASL in the actual American theater is just absolutely amazing. Um, so she was a speedster that was also deaf. Amazing. Um, and in real life, really is deaf. It's anyways. Um, and we got Barry Kina as Druig, which is whole religious angle there is just amazing if you think about it. Uh, Mao Dong Seok is Gilgamesh, which um, just because of the character name, Angelina Jolie and him are paired up. I just think that's funny. Um, and then uh, Harish Patel as Karim, uh, if I might have said a lot of those names wrong, I don't doubt it, is he's our like uh, heat between he and Dev Patel. Dev? Jesus. Between him and um, I say other names way too often. Kano, Najiani, uh, the stud muffin that he is with his beefy arms that he works so hard on. Good golly. Uh, is, that's our, you know, our driving um, funny. Anyways, um, which is one of the positives. So this dialogue stuff could kind of be in here because I feel like the funny stuff did have a tendency to land, but it was also directly because of the acting. It was just like people like, you know, uh, Camille and uh, Harish. Um, so we'll move on into like a middle category again. So the Justice League Light. This is literally the name of what I think most of my video and concept of all this is. This is literally Justice League Light. I heard a concept thrown out there that uh, the pitch might have been something along the lines. What if uh, the Prometheus concept was actually brought to light? I see that. I definitely do. It's like the Eternals were skinned as the Prometheans or vice versa, you know, so you have creators conceptually. Those not the creators, so I, I don't actually necessarily agree with that. But what I would say is that this is literally Justice League White, in my personal opinion, if they lived forever. If they lived forever. Anyways, so you a lot of similarities. This would be the whole video by itself, or at least a section of the spoiler video, something along the lines. We'll go back to the middle again. CGI, it has these beautiful, epic, because that's what this movie is, absolutely epic, because of the, the music tie-in. Let's point that out. Remont, I cannot say this guy's name. He's from the, he's from the Game of Thrones, you know, uh, uh, um, background, primarily, where we get that lovely Game of Thrones reunion between richer men and, um, uh, Kit Harrington and then the music I just got that kind of feel doesn't matter um, these are the it doesn't matter digress I digress uh, is that the um, Game of Thrones stuff is middling because you know who it is but the music is so beautiful and it enhances the experience but the CGI that creates the epic was questioning at times because you have these beautiful backgrounds like I would not even know if it was real or fake you know like, yeah but then we get into what I would consider is the absolute worst part of the movie we're fighting dogs alien dogs for the hundred billion time I've seen this trope I feel like I was honestly watching very similar aliens to um, uh, all you need is kill and I think I should just leave it at that for any of you that actually know what I'm talking about, because that's not the title of the movie as it finally laid on DVD and Blu-ray. But seriously, those monsters that were fighting Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt look borderline. You know what I mean? These CGI dogs that have uh, an interesting you know, history to the whole mythology, which was, again, one of the most beautiful things in this entire thing, the mythology of the Eternals and what it could eventually, this pool of ideas that's laying the groundwork for like all these new movies in the MCU is just absolutely beautiful. But the villain sucks. I'm sorry, the CGI dogs are crap. They have a moment to, to show what the potential could be and it just gets like, this is what Marvel's doing. I, I hope I have a theory leaning in another direction, which I think would line up quite right, but like, the, the path of a real good villain kind of thing, we haven't seen a good one yet. And this is another unfortunate good example. It's like, here's a bunch of cannon fodder for big action sequences, which, you know, leads to mediocre CGI, except for whenever it's not the fights. You know? 
Anyways, um, we already covered direction, uh, which again, I, that this direction part goes into uh, storytelling and then screenwriting, which is part of the dialogue and whatnot. Whoever wrote this has a very similar concept to the same kind of storytelling I did in college. I wrote a paper in 2000, what, 9, 10? A couple of them. And they're, it's exactly the same kind of storytelling that I'm starting to see on screen more often, is that to complete a story, you're filling in the background by doing flash sequences and intervaling it in between without confusing the audience by creating context. Beautiful. They did a beautiful job. Whoever the editor is, I should have looked that up. I will for a future video, so this is the next video with spoilers. The editor of this movie did amazing. Amazing just transitions, everything. All right, um, now uh, we did that, the actors and the music, CGI. So we're just gonna end on the last thing that I hated it was just dialogue. The dialogue at times is just pure crap. It just, it, it's almost like they lifted it from the page in like 19 whatever it was. It's bad at times, genuinely just bad dialogue. Um, but the thing that saves it every single time, as bad as it might be, is simply the acting. The, it, the amount of carry that these 12 people I just listed, and that's not even including the supporting cast, the amount of just weight that they carry as a character, like, you really feel that they all really took it on. Um, uh, I'm going to leave uh, on a, we're going to end this on a spoiler so semi-spoiler, because the pool of ideas that this movie lays the groundwork for, um, we're going to, well, sorry, we're going to give it a score real quick. So honestly, I'd give it like a 7, you know, maybe not a 10, but maybe like a 6.5, somewhere in there, not a 10, somewhere in there. I would take either. We'll call it a 6.75 and split the generals out of 10. You know, it's it's a really good movie. It's got grand design and everything. And uh, if you don't want any spoilers, this is where you would stop this particular video because I will I want to talk about spoilers. Is the fact that there are three new Marvel characters that have been introduced into oh I forgot to you know, but I started to, anyways three new three new Marvel characters introduced into this in a way that's like. It feels a little cheap, sort of. Like, now we have inklings for a sword-wielding character. Um, and then maybe some other space-jumping characters. And I find that fascinating that that's the way they get introduced. That's my, you know, little spoiler. But um, what I'm going to do now is... Uh, I'm probably going to picture this real quick, erase it, and then um, start the spoiler video. So if you've had uh, any enjoyment whatsoever watching me, just kind of um, please like the video. May as well say that it's part of the dialogue. Now, uh, gonna go, you know, the the signing out.